Welcome back to my Construct series where I take mechanics from popular games and I try and implement them inside of Construct to provide a tutorial at the same time. One of the comments that I got from a subscriber was actually getting in and out of cars, similar to what we see in GTA. Now, GTA is a big, huge 3D game and Construct is only just learning the 3D stuff. So being able to do what GTA can do, is not quite possible. If we go right back in time to the original GTA game where we had a top-down perspective, we can actually get that working inside of Construct. So let's get started. First thing you want to do is take your background layer. We're just going to find a light gray to be the background, like so. Then we're going to start adding some objects to this, starting with a tiled background, and this is going to be our road. So what I recommend for the road is take the width and move it down to 100. I'm going to take a much darker grey, fill it in, and then we're going to use a bright yellow. And this is going to be the lines on the road as well. I've not put fill on, so I'm just going to quickly fill that in again. And then just hit the X. So our road in place, we can start building this out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly speed through and add my road. Now to add some extra variety to our level, we're also going to add some grass and water. So insert a new object. And this can just be a tile background as well. I'm not going to add too much in the way of texture to this because it's just a quick example. But obviously you can spend a bit more time on this and really change the look and feel of how you want this to look. So, so far we've got nothing too special, but we've got something that represents a small city. And we can change the size of this to be much bigger, and if you are making this into a full concept, you'd want this to be humongous compared to what I've got it now. But again, this is just a quick concept to show you what this could look like. Now, where this really stands out is when we start adding the buildings. So we're going to insert a new object. We actually want the 3D shape. I'm going to call this building. I'm going to click. And what we have is we have six frames at the bottom, and these are actually a six sides of a cube. So front is actually the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into the folder, and I'm going to get this roof texture. And I got this from Open Game Art. I'll put a link into the description on where I found this. This was from a really, really nice asset pack that had a lot of different building designs on it. For the left side, I'm going to have this as my front entrance or door. So I've got this texture here to do that for me. Bit of an old, more wooden look instead of a more modern skyscraper, but it's quite a nice texture anyway. And then for the other sides, I'm just going to add a decorative wall. Now, because it's a 3D object, we get a 3D perspective of it as well. And we can keep adding quite a few of these and really start to make our city come to life. Now one of the options that we've got here is our Z height, and this is how tall the building is. So if I put this one up to 30, this building's going to be much taller. So it's a really, really good idea to play around with some of these height perspectives. This will make your level stand out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle some buildings around my level, and then we'll see what it looks like in just a second. So now I've got my buildings implemented into the level, we can still do a bit more with this. So first thing you could do is you can actually create a duplicate of this building, set this building here, clone it, create a second building, and edit some of the textures on here to give you a different look. This will give you more variety of different buildings. Something I'm not going to do in this video because I want this video to be as short as possible, but something that you can look at doing. The other thing that we can do is actually insert another 3D shape, and we're actually going to call this roof. I'm going to add it, and what I want to do is I want to take all these textures and just make it my roof that I had before. Now you'll notice I always leave out the first one, this is just the bottom, this is something we won't see, but one thing you can do is you can just give this a texture anyway, because it's this texture that will actually come up on this sprite image here. So if you want to make it really clear what these different 3D objects is, so for instance this building, 
what I might do for this one is I might add the front face to this one just so I can clearly see in my options what this building represents so that's just a bit of a hint there for you so with this new roof texture here what we actually want to do is turn it from a box either to a wedge or a prism or you can even use a pyramid depending on what you're looking for and this will give you a roof shape now if we put it on top of our building it's just going to go inside our building what we actually have to do is take the height of the building which in this case is 15 and then we can take this and put the z elevation up to 15 and then we can pull it on top of our building and that gives our building a roof we can even change the height of this roof as well down to 10 and this just gives us that little extra variety you can take this a step further and create 3d objects for chimneys as well so you can have a chimney that sticks out and that'll have its own perspective you can also use this to create trees and lampposts so you can take this quite far i'm not going to take it any further in this video but what i'll do is quickly add some roofs on to our buildings and then we'll see what it looks like after So now we've got all this in place, we've got our level and if we play it, you can see that we've got that sort of 3D perspective looking down at our world. Now we actually need to add our player to it. So for this, just insert a new object, scroll down to our sprites, we'll just call this player. Click anywhere to add it. Then again, I'm just going to import a texture, but if you've got your own, you can create your own as well. Now this is another one that I got from Open Game Art. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. And this one has a lot of different weapons that the character can hold, lots of animation. So a really fantastic pack to get a hold of if you're into this sort of survivor style shooter. I'm going to crop that one. And I'm just going to place it in the level. I want to resize it so it fits into the world properly. So I think that a pedestrian would be about half the size of a road like so. And again, once we play this, it's going to zoom down. So don't worry, that it looks a little bit small at the moment. In terms of our player, we need to add some behaviours. So we're going to add the first one. And the first one's going to be scroll two, which means the camera is going to follow our player when it moves around the level. And the second one is going to be our eight directions, meaning we can move in all eight directions. Now with this in place, we can move around the level and we can see that 3D perspective of the world. This is a really, really good idea of what's happening with each part of the world and the buildings, the different building heights come through as well. But currently I can go through the buildings. So what we need to do is just take our building, edit behaviors, and we're just gonna add the solid behavior. And now we can't pass through any of the buildings. Now finally, the main point of this video was to get it so we can go in and out of cars. So we need to add a car for us to go in and out of. So we're gonna insert new objects, go down to sprites, I'm going to call this car. I'm going to click to add it. I'm going to import another texture. And I'm going to import my car. There's a texture I've done myself, so you'll see it matches none of the other stuff that I've got on my level. But again, we're just doing a quick tutorial, so I'm not worried too much that nothing matches at this stage. I'm going to resize my car to the size that I think it should be. And then we're all set up to start going into our code. But before we do that, we just need to actually go to our car and just add one behavior really really quickly and add the car behavior now with the car behavior it's really important that we make it so it is not enabled to start with because we don't want it to move around unless we're inside the car if you want as well you can also add the solid behavior this means when the car is not moving we can't pass through it so it'll be a solid object that our player can't go through so it makes a lot of sense so now we can move to our event sheets and we can actually start programming this code. So first thing we're going to do is check if a key is pressed. Now check if a key is pressed with our keyboard. So just add a new object. Scroll down to keyboard. And just insert. So we're going to go to our keyboard now. And check on key pressed. Now my action key I'm going to set to X. But you can set your action key to whatever you want it to be. And then hit done. And then we're also going to add another condition. I'm going to say player is eight directions enabled. Now on its own, this doesn't make much sense because of course eight directions is enabled, but we're going to do some stuff in our code to change that. It'll make sense when we get to that stage. I'm going to click on this left hand side where the green arrow is. I'm going to use that to add a blank sub event. And in this blank sub event, what we're going to do is double click on it and check if player 
is overlapping at offset. Now, it's impossible for us to overlap our car because the car has a solid behavior, but what we can do is we can move the car's hitbox out the way. So what we're going to do is take the Y hitbox, which is actually the, the width of the car. I'm going to do 20, so this moves it up by 20. And then we're actually going to copy and paste this, double click again, and do minus 20. This means we can enter the car from both sides. Final thing we need to do with this condition is right click on it, and make it an all block. So it'll check if we're either on one side of the car or the other. If so, we need to do a couple of things. First, we need to go to our player, right click, add a new behavior. I'm going to add the pin behavior. It's going to be really important for how we're going to get this to work. I'm going to add action. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do player. I'm going to set visible and make the player invisible. We're then going to also go to our player. And we're going to go down to pin to object. And we're going to pin to our car. This means that our player is now attached to our car. So anywhere our car goes, our player goes as well. It'll be attached to the same point that our player was when it pressed the X button, which will be at either side of the car. We can also go to our car now. We can scroll down. And one thing I like to do is set speed to zero. If not, when we get back in the car, it will retain its speed from last time. We also need to go to our car. And we need to do set enabled and enabled. Now I actually recommend flipping these just to be safe, just in case the speed does not work while the car is not enabled. I'm not sure about that one. So we'll flip them to be safe. Final thing we're going to do is we're going to add a weight. I'll explain what this weight's for in a second. About half a second. And then player. Set enabled on the eight directions, disabled. And this is where this comes in. So now it's disabled, the player can no longer move because they're in the car, so they move with the car behavior instead. So now we need to do the inverse of so getting out of the car. So we're going to add an event, keyboard, on key pressed. We can use the same key, so X in this case, and hit done. I'm going to add another condition, player, and then is enabled. And what we're going to do is we're going to invert this to say if it's not enabled. And this is what we're doing here. We're disabling it, which means that we're now in the car. If you don't have this 0.5 seconds, what happens is both codes run at the same time and you get yourself locked in a position you can't get out of in the game. So that 0.5 seconds fixes that. So what do we want to do if the X button's pressed? So first we want to do is we want to take our player. And we actually want to unpin our player first. Once our player is unpinned, we can now make our player visible. We can then take our car. And we want to set enabled back to disabled so the car is no longer moving and acts like a car. It acts as a solid object in our world. And then we want to go to our system and finally wait half a second, just like we did before. And then we can enable the eight directions. And again, this just stops both codes running at the same time, just having that wait in. So now let's run it. So I can move around the level. If I hit X, nothing happens. If I go to the edge of the car and hit X, I go inside the car. I'm now able to drive around this world. And then when I hit X, I jump out the car. The car stays where it is. I'm free to move again. I'm getting the other side of the car this time. And I'll get out the car and I'm free to move once again. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. This tutorial you can take pretty far. There's a website that I'll show on the screen that's really, really good for generating city maps that you can use as a guideline. So what I've done before is actually took a screenshot of this, put it into my world and set to the size that I want and then put the buildings and roads on top of it and then delete it when I'm done, leaving just my sprites. Let me know what mechanics you'd like to see implemented from another game for my next video and please subscribe and like if you've enjoyed this content today.